exploring, especially if you're exploring to do something new. Is that making sense, yeah? Great. And once you begin to do that, then you can do Tip, um, then you can take it the next step, which is once you know what you want to do, you know your direction, then you go, but how do I achieve this? Then you begin to ask this, that question. Okay? So now I know what I want to do. How do I begin to achieve it? And you wonder about, you know, why should I ask myself this question? It's because when you first, when you begin to actually ask the question, is when the answer will emerge. So you start becoming your own coach in a way. You start coaching yourself, you start asking yourself, the question and the answer will come in Charlotte soon. The third tip is to begin to create a life list, a wish list. Now, this is quite interesting because, trust me, it actually works. So you take a piece of paper, a blank piece of paper with lines, whatever, and write down anything and everything that comes to mind that you want to do. So it can be either do it now, or it can be things that you wish to do in your life. So for example, if you want to travel and see a particular country, you put that down, or if you want to, you know, become an author, you put that down, or if you want to, um, you know, open a business. Whatever it is that you want to do, you put that down on that list, and then put it somewhere where you can see it, where you can kind of walk by it. So you either put it on the fridge, or you put it in a particular room in the house where you visually can see it. Please don't worry about, oh, how am I going to do this right now? You know, and think, oh, and you know, usually we go, oh, this is impossible. Though. You know, we stop ourselves from dreaming before we even started. How many of us do that? A lot of people do that. And I invite you to do this with any aspect of your life. So it, whether it's for family or you want to do something spiritually, you want to contribute to your community. Whatever it is, allow your wish list to come alive and then put it away. And what this does is, as you see it time to time, your unconscious mind, you know, subhanAllah, you've been given this faculty, you know, by Allah, subhanAllah ta'ala, this will actually start to find ways for you to meet this. This works every single time. I mean, you know, for lots of people, it might take time for things to happen, but you might go back and you say, oh, I had written this on my wish list two years ago and I've already done it. I love it when people come and tell me that this works, yeah? Is that all clear or not? Is this making sense? Yes? So once you've created a wish list, another way to do this is to make your wish list really come alive, which is using a vision board. Anyone heard of what a vision board is? No? Uh, anyone heard of the famous Walt Disney? Yeah? You know what he used to do uh, first when he used to design um, cartoons? He used to do a storyboard, like he used to create everything on the wall and do like a full storyboard. You know, this is how they do cartoon, this is how they do animation now, right? So the whole idea was animation was with, with pictures. So with pictures, things came alive. That's how we see it happening, right? And amazingly enough, our imagination is wonderful to make us uh, motivated to achieve goals. It's really a wonderful tool for inspiration. So what a vision board is like, a, it's like your own story in the images of things that you'd like to do. So buy a big uh, poster board, you know, one of those big poster things, I don't know what they call them. <laughs> poster board, yes. and, and put it in, in a place where you can find, where you can see it every day. And cut out pictures that inspire you. So for imagine, imagine that you want to move home. Imagine your ideal house. And you see a picture of it in a magazine. Cut it out and put it up on your vision board. Um, imagine if you want to do something, you know, you want to go to a particular country, you know, and you see a picture of that country, like for example, somewhere in Africa or whatever, cut it out, put it on there. You want an ideal family life, imagine what an ideal family life would look like. You see an image, you cut it out, you put it up there. Is this making sense? So what you do is you start to create a visual image, a visual story of what you actually want to do. And when you start doing that, it starts to come alive. And you start to feel more inspired, isn't it? Because you can see, oh, this could be possible. I could actually do this. How often do we daydream? Anyone daydream here? It's very much the same thing, isn't it? What are we doing? We're using our dreams, our images, to inspire us, take us to another world. And what you can do with the vision board is you can also use it for you know, your family or your community or your work. So you can make a collective vision board as a family in your house. Put, uh, you know, pick a wall in your house where um, you know, even the kids can participate and you can create a common vision. It makes us accountable. 
<laughs> I see some knowing smiles there. And what that means is, you know, that then other people will ask us, oh, did you do what you said you were going to do? And if you haven't, when you went to do it? So that actually calls us to action. It gives us someone to account to. If we don't share our vision with anyone, what happens? It dies, right? If we don't explore it, it doesn't open up, it actually dies. So it's really, really important, even from small goals to big goals, to share your vision, to open it up, to dream and to talk to people. It's a risk, yes. Most of us worry, oh, you know, oh, what will people think, or they might think I'm crazy, or, or you know, I can't possibly share that. But usually, when you share a vision, you will find that people will be really excited for you. You know, this is why I said, share with people that you love, that you trust, who really, really support you. So you start small and then you build big. Yes? And the last one, really important one, is to set goals to track your progress. Because it's really fine to have a vision, but what if we don't have steps? So for example, we say, I'm going to do, you know, I'm going to exercise six times a week or whatever the is. <laughs> I don't think that's realistic. But if, if we were going to do that, for example, whatever the goal is, if we don't actually say, I'm going to do this on X day at X time, then it doesn't really happen. So you create a bigger goal and then you jump backwards and you use your diary and you plan. Now the key with setting goals is to make sure that they're realistic in your life. So if you, if you don't have access, for example, to a, a gym, for example, if, you know, we're talking about health, so this is why I keep coming back to that. If you don't have access to something, then you say, okay, fine, I'm going to do it at home, or I'm going to do it in the time that I have in the morning. Whatever it is, make it work in your lifestyle, and only you know what would work, where you can create time for that, you know, and that way that will keep you excited and keep you on track. And the last thing, very importantly, is to make contingency plans.